you would you stand with me John chapter 4 John chapter 4 and I want to begin reading your hearing verse number 46 of John chapter 4 the word of God says so Jesus came again to Cana of Galilee where he had made the water to wine and there was a certain nobleman whose son was sick at Capernaum. And when he heard that Jesus had come out of Judea into Galilee, he went to him and implored him to come down and heal his son, for he was at the point of death. Then Jesus said to him, unless you people see signs and wonders, you will by no means believe. The nobleman said to him, sir... Come down before my child dies. And Jesus said to him, go your way. Your son lives. And so the man believed the word that Jesus spoke to him. And he went his way. And as he was now going down, his servants met him and told him, saying, your son lives. And then he inquired of him the hour which he got better. And they said to him, yesterday at the seventh hour... The fever left him. And so the father knew that it was at the same hour in which Jesus said to him, your son lives. And he, he himself believed and his whole household. And this again, the second sign that Jesus did when he had come out of Judea into Galilee. Uh, today I want to talk about he did it his way. He, he did it his way. In the genre of music, there is a category called classics. Uh, music that fits this category are deemed and coined timeless music. Either a particular song or album, it transcends all periods of, of time. That means all generations identify and celebrate this type of music. If I call out Mays featuring Frank Beverly, he has some classic music. If I call Aretha Franklin, y'all, he she has some uh, classic music. If I call Al Green, mm -hmm, yeah, he has some, some classic music. If I call the OJs, come on here, uh, they have some, some classic music. If I call Whitney Houston, y'all, she has some, some classic music music there was a legend by the name of Frank Sinatra and he had some some classic music and one of his classic songs is called my way. It speaks to a different life, an uncharted life, a life that marches to a different a drum beat, a life that regardless of people's input or opinion as we ease into John a chapter 4, I can hear Jesus Christ tells us that he does things his way. The truth is one of our biggest wrestling matches is between myself and God. God because I am battling I am wrestling between my way and and his way my way is now but his way is later my way is to go his way is to wait my way is to live by the flesh but his way is to live by the spirit my way is changing jobs right now his way is staying put and be being patient my way is taking another ministry assignment. His way is, is waiting on him and being patient what God has assigned of me, me to be, to do. And can I tell you this? Sometimes you have to understand that your way is not the best way. Uh, his way is always uh, the best way. But the truth is sometimes we don't get our way. But can I ask you a question? If you don't get your way, will you still trust him? If you don't get your way, uh, we Will you still still praise him? Uh, the truth is, sometimes you may not get uh, the, the prayer that you want. You may not get 
healed the way you want. You may not get the job you want. You may not get the church how you go your way, but can you still trust God? Can you still uh, uh, follow God? Because the truth is, sometimes his way is strange. Sometimes his way is uncanny. Sometimes his way don't make sense on paper, but here's the truth. His way is always uh, the best way. Uh -huh. In John chapter 9, he restores a, a blind man by spitting on the ground and making clay and putting on his eyes his way. In John chapter 6, he feeds 5,000 by using a few loaves of bread and fish. And y'all, he still has leftovers. His way. In John chapter 11, he hears that his friend Lazarus is sick, but when he hears the news, he stays two days longer than where he is. And guess what? While he gets there, he's dead. His way. In Matthew chapter 8, he meets a leper who, who, who's not supposed to be touched, but guess what? He touches him anyway and heals his body. His way to save the world. He used an old wooden cross, an emblem of suffering and shame. His way. I can tell somebody on this afternoon that he directs his way. He blesses his way. He answers our prayers his way. He opens doors his way. He delivers his way. He grows his church his way. He heals his way. He promotes his way. He saves his way. He moves his way. I thank God for his way. This is the lesson of the second sign we find in, in the book of John. John calls these miracles, he calls them, them signs, and he performs seven signs for us to understand that our God can do anything. I, I know some of you have limitations. I know some of you have been to school and you've got your education. You know all of this, but, but can I tell you something? I believe God can do anything. I, I still believe believe that he has miracle power. I, I still believe that he can dry up cancer. I still believe that he can give you a harvest. I still believe that he can turn things around. I still believe he can do anything but 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 fail. And so here in John chapter 4, he gives us a, this sign about learning how to trust his way. Number one, y'all, there, uh, there is a, a word here about about encore the church say encore in verse 46 John says so Jesus comes again to Cana of Galilee where he had made up the water to wine and there was a, a certain nobleman whose son was, was sick John says yo this ain't the first time uh, that he has been uh, to Cana. Last time he was here, uh, he was at a wedding and the wine ran out. Uh, uh, but y'all, he, he make, took water and turned it in, into, into wine. But John says, y'all, he's here again. And, and whenever he shows up again, it should be a level of expectation, y'all, in the music world, in the art world, they have a term called encore. That word means to do it again once more and if an artist is so wonderful the crowd will clap and say encore do it again uh, do it again and can I tell you something every now and then you ought to tell God do it again show out again heal again set me free again bless my life again and don't you know that you don't have a God who's a one hit wonder he can do it again he is the God of again. That's a word here about effort, y'all. But also here, uh, that's a word here about effort, effort. Church, say effort. Uh -huh. the verse 40, 47, he said uh, that this man, when he heard uh, that Jesus had come out of Judea into Galilee, he went to him and implored him to come down and heal this son. Understand this family and friends from Capernaum uh, to Canaan. That is at least 20 miles. Uh, it is a, a half day journey. This man says, yo, Jesus, since you're not going to come to me, I, I, I'm going to come uh, to, to you. Uh -huh. I, 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 I 
got to get to, to, guess because I'm so desperate for a blessing. I'm so desperate for a miracle. I'm going to come to you. And y'all, I found out in my short time on earth because sometimes you have to go the extra mile to get the extra blessing. Sometimes you got to go the extra mile uh, uh, to get uh, the extra blessing. But our problem is what we do, we want to evaluate other people's effort, especially on Sunday morning, on especially in worship. We pe see people making effort by lifting their hands. We see people crying out for joy. We see people leaping and running and we sit in the corner and say, it don't take all of that. I, I wish they would be quiet. I, I, I wish I wish they, I wish they sit down. But can I tell you something? Maybe you can get a blessing if you had some extra effort. Don't evaluate me. Just leave me alone. Let me holler. Let me shout. Let me cry. You don't know what I need God for. You don't know what I'm praying God for. I'm praying for a healing. I'm praying for deliverance. I'm praying God will open some doors. I'm praying for increase. Leave my effort alone. He, he, he got to Jesus and the Bible says he implored him he he begged him y'all this is a noble man he had a title y'all he had money but he says guess what I'm not going to let my position and my possessions stop me from getting what I need from him and here's my question to you how low will you go uh -huh, yeah. how, how low will you go uh, uh, to get uh, what you need from people and some of you been in church for an hour and you ain't clapped your hands yet you've been here looking around uh, checking your phone you've been here sucking your teeth and say I wish they hurry up I gotta go home and eat some food Can I, how low will you go how low will you go to get your blessing but every now and then forget about yourself and lift your hands. Forget about who's sitting by you. And give him glory. Forget about yourself. And kneel down like Kevin did. Forget about yourself. And leap for joy. Do your shout. How low will you go? Here it is. When, when, when he does it his way real quickly. Number one. Be prepared to get... The answer uh, you don't want. Uh, uh, verse 47, 48, he says uh, that, that, that he, he came down uh, uh, to, to see Jesus. And verse 48 says, uh, then he said to him, unless you people see signs and wonders, you will by no means believe. Uh, many times the, the master always teaches uh, a message uh, before he gives us a miracle. And the message here is that don't let the signs outshine the one who gives the signs. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah. Here it is. A faith that's only built on the miraculous is not a complete faith. Because here it is. He says, I may not give you a miracle every time, but you still got to believe in me. I may not show up how you want me to show up every time, but I still gotta trust him. And, and, and here is the tension because there are many people who love his person, uh huh, uh, who love his performance, uh, but do not love his person. And, and he says, I want you to love my person. Uh, not just my performance. I, I want you to love me as the, the Messiah, not just as a miracle worker. And the tragedy is that many folk want his stuff, but we, won't, we, we don't want him. Mm -hmm. We want his blessings, but we don't want him. We want his healing, but we won't, don't want him. We want all that he provides, but we don't want him. He said, I want you to believe without seeing. But your problem is, you want to see first, then believe after. They ask you a question, what is your faith on? If you're going to be a faith walker, you got to learn how to believe and trust God. 
when you can't touch it yet. You got to learn how to take God at his word. Lord have mercy. When you can't see it yet. All the money ain't got to line up. But God gave you a promise. God gave you a dream. And sometimes faith says, guess what? I got to take the first step first. I hear his voice. I hear him bidding me to come on. Start that business. Start that ministry. Start a new career. Go back to school. But it takes faith to do it. Um, 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 uh, 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 number two, when it does it, does it his way, uh, be prepared to change your expectation. Um, verse 47, 8 says that when he heard that he came out of uh, Judea, um, and uh, he implored him to come down and heal his son for at the point of death. Um, verse 49 says, he says, sir, come down to my house. The man thought that Jesus would come to his house. And Jesus says, in essence, sir, don't tell me how to work things out. Just ask me to work things out. Lean in because because sometimes our expectations become our limitations. And and Jesus says, don't tell me how to heal. Don't tell me how to fix. Don't tell me how to deliver. Don't tell me how how to change. And whenever you try to tell God what to do, what happens is you box God in. Maybe you don't know, but can I tell you something? He's omnipotent. He's omnipresent. If I had time, I would tell you. He's Jehovah Jireh. He's Jehovah Shalom. He's Jehovah Rapha. He's Jehovah Rapha. He, he's Jehovah Nisi. He's El Shaddai. You can't box God in. God can do exceedingly, abundantly, more than I can ever ask or think according to the power that works in us. This, this, this man um, probably looked like he wasn't saved because if he was saved, he would have known that Jesus and his father were one. And one of the attributes of Jesus is he's omnipresent. He's God on calling and God at the same time on home and Lord have mercy. He's God in Sunnyside and still God in South Park. Come on here. He's God in the heights and the same God in the woodlands because God is not human. Uh God is a a spirit. And Jesus said, guess what? Just because I'm not there does not mean I'm not there. Oh, yes. Uh I thank God, I'm about to lose it. I thank God that we have a God that's able to work at long distance. That's why you can be at your house as a parent and get on your knees and pray for a child that's across the world and say, Father, wherever he or she is, protect that child. Cover that child. Order that steps, child. Order that child's steps. Give that child the sermon. And don't you know, uh, your God can hear you in Pearland, hear you in Canada, and still keep your child in London, keep your child in China, because we have a God who is everywhere. Here it is when he does it his way. You've got to learn to take God at his word. He said, sir, come on down to, to, to my house. Uh, and watch what he says in verse 50. Jesus says, uh, uh, sir, go your way. Your, your son lives. So the man believed the word that Jesus spoke to him. And he went his way. And that's what some of you are right now. You're going to have to learn how to take God at his word. Lord, help me. That's what some of you are right now. 
You've been praying your prayers. You've been seeking God for what's next. You've been seeking God for your increase. You've been seeking God for a miracle. But, but, but God has, has said, I'm going to do this thing my way, not your way. And guess what? You have to learn how to trust God at his, his, his word. When he says, go your way, that means that it may turn out or, or work out maybe a day. Sometimes it could be a month. Sometimes it could be be a year because guess what? God don't work by your time mix. God don't work by uh, by your your smartphone. No, no, he works on his own sovereign time. And can I tell you something? Uh, I'm so glad that God knows how to answer my prayer at the right time. And I thank God that God is God enough to sometimes tell me yes. And sometimes he'll tell me wait, but sometimes he'll tell me tell me no. And I've learned in 48 years to thank God for his yeses, to thank God for his waits. But I learned how to give God glory for his nose. I thank God for the doors he closed. I thank God for the ways he shut because he knows what's best for me. He knows what I can handle. He knows that's what I what my capacity can, can deal with. Uh, can you tell somebody say neighbor? Go go your way. That means I've learned how to walk by by faith. Uh-huh. And watch the man what the man does. The man believe. And the man learned how to take him at his word. Can I tell you something? It's something significant about his word. Sometimes people on this side, their word don't mean nothing. They'll tell you one thing and change their song tomorrow. They'll tell you that they're with you. Uh -huh. But leave you high and dry when you need them. But I thank God that whatever he speaks over your life, you can book it. You can count it. Whatever he promised you, uh -huh. you ain't got to worry about it showing up. Uh -huh. It's going to, to show up. I got to learn how to take him at his word. And that's why I want tell somebody here today all you need is one word all you need is one word one word can change your life one word can change your future one word can change the trajectory of of your life and watch this man as this man goes his way he begins to walk home he's walking home to check on his sick son. He's walking home because he took God at his word. And can I tell somebody on this Sunday afternoon that while you are walking, God is working. While you are walking, your God is working. I said, wow, you are walking. That's when God begins to work. Can I get a witness in here? I thank God that when I walk by faith, that's when God begins to work on my behalf. Can I get a witness in here? I'm trying to get out of here. But if I had about 70 of y'all just start walking around, about 70 of y'all just start walking around, I have walk into what God has next. Walk into your future. Because you believe that, you, that while you're walking, yeah, um, yeah, that he's going to work. That means that I've got to have faith. That means that I've got to have action. That means that I've got to believe when it don't make sense. I've got to believe when it don't add up. Can I get a witness? The Bible says that as he went home, yeah, yeah, he met one of his servants. And the servant told him, man, quit crying. Man, quit tripping. I've got good news for you. The son 
who you were praying for, that son who you were worried over, that son who you thought was going to die, here's your good news. He lives. I say he lives. He lives. And he is alive. The servant, the man said, he lives. And he began to scratch his head. And he asked him, asked the servant, I, 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 I thank God that my boy is well. But I got one question. About what time did my son get better? The servant told him the time when the boy raised up. That man said, that was just when my Jesus told me everything is going to be all right. That was when he told me that it was going to work out. That was when he told me that I was going to give me a miracle. Can I get a witness? Will you help me get out of here? Just look at somebody. You ain't got to touch them. But say, neighbor, neighbor, neighbor. When you take God at his word, you got to believe that everything, everything, everything is going to be all right. What I have them helping here? I got some folk who know that story. I've got some folk who walk with God. I've got some folk who had to trust Him. I've got some folk who had to give that child back to God. I had some folk who had to give that husband, give that wife back to God. I got some folk who had to give that supervisor back to God. I've got some folk in here who had to give that problem back to God. But here's the good news. When you gave it to him one way, he gave it back to you a different way. Is there anybody here? Is there anybody here? Is there anybody here going to take God at his word? Hallelujah. I'm going to my seat. But can I tell you this? Belief leads to blessings. And blessings follows belief. Good day, y'all. Happy anniversary. New beginnings. But while you're preaching... While you're serving, while you believe in God for what's next, makes you understand it won't come your way. It's going to come his way. That future project, his way. More members, his way. More ministries, his way. Yeah. God, you just have to wait. You gotta trust and give him time. No matter how long it takes, he's a God that you can hear, but you don't have to worry. He may not come when you want him to, but I know he's right on, right on time. Am I by myself in here? Does anybody know that he'll show up right on time? Does anybody here know that he'll make a way out of no way? Does anybody here know that he'll change your situation? Does anybody know that he'll do it? I said he'll do it. I said he'll do it. I said he'll do it. Oh. Oh, 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 lift your hands and tell him thank you. Lift your hands and tell him thank you. Lift your hands and tell him thank you. Can you say yeah? 
Shall you say yeah? yeah. Shall you say yeah? yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Good day, y'all. Yeah. Do me a favor. Yeah. If I go to my seat, yeah. slip your arm yeah. around your neighbor. Yeah. Say, neighbor, yeah. I've got a feeling that everything yeah. is going to be all right. Yeah. It may not look like it, but everything yeah. is going to be all right. It may not seem like it, but everything is going to be all right. Everything, 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 everything. Yeah. <laughs>